Have you ever wondered how the magic box you use to play games or do your homework known as a computer works? Well, buckle up because today we're diving into the fascinating world of computers. These electronic devices found in nearly every corner of our lives are crucial for processing information and communication. From our pockets to our desks, from classrooms to space stations, computers are everywhere. They've become an essential part of our daily lives, helping us learn, work, play, and stay connected with the world. But what makes a computer a computer? How do they manage to do so many complex tasks and yet make it seem so effortless? Understanding the inner workings of computers can seem like a daunting task, but fear not. We're here to unravel the mystery, one bite at a time. So, are you ready to embark on this exciting journey through the history and workings of computers? Once upon a time, there were no computers. Can you imagine that? Now, let's embark on a journey back in time to understand the evolution of these fascinating machines. Our story begins in the late 18th century, when the idea of a machine that could calculate complex mathematical problems was just a dream. The first computing devices were mechanical or electromechanical machines, like the difference engine and the analytical engine developed by Charles Babbage. These were not computers as we know them today, but they laid the groundwork for what was to come. As we moved into the 20th century, the mechanical machines gave way to vacuum tubes. These were big, expensive, and not very reliable, but they represented a significant step forward. They were used in the construction of the first electronic computers, such as the ENIAC, which was a monster of a machine, taking up an entire room. However, everything changed in the 1940s with the invention of the transistor. This tiny device, no bigger than a grain of rice, could do the same job as a vacuum tube, but in a much smaller space and with less power. This was a game changer. The first transistor-based computer was built in the 1950s, and it marked the beginning of the era of modern computers. From then on, computers began to shrink in size and grow in power. Integrated circuits, which are essentially compacted transistors, were developed in the late 1950s. Then came the microprocessor in the 70s, which is essentially a computer on a chip. These advancements led to the development of personal computers, which made computing accessible to everyone. And so, the humble computer has evolved from a room-sized behemoth to a pocket-sized powerhouse. Computers have transformed our world in countless ways, from how we work and play to how we communicate and learn. They've become an integral part of our lives, and it's hard to imagine a world without them. From massive machines to tiny transistors, the history of computers is truly a testament to human innovation. Now that we know where computers came from, you might be wondering, how do they work? Well, let's dive right into the fascinating world of computer operations. At their core, computers do three things. They take in data, process it, and then display the results. This cycle of data input, processing, and output is what makes a computer, well, a computer, Let's start with data input. This is where the computer receives information. It could be from you typing on a keyboard, clicking a mouse, or even from another computer over the internet. Input devices like keyboards, mice, and cameras are like the computer's senses. They allow it to interact with the outside world and receive information. Now, once the computer has some data, it needs to do something with it. This is where the processing unit, often called the central processing unit, or CPU, comes in. The CPU is like the brain of the computer. It follows the instructions of a program to manipulate the data. It might add numbers together, move data around, or make decisions based on the data it has. But to do all that, the CPU needs to remember things. That's where the memory unit, also known as RAM, comes into play. RAM stands for Random Access Memory, and it's where the CPU stores data it's currently working on. Think of it like the computer's short-term memory, Finally, once the processing is done, the computer needs to show the results in some way. This is where output devices come in. These could be a monitor displaying a web page, a printer printing out a document, or speakers playing music. So, that's the basic principle of how computers work. Pretty interesting, right? Now, keep in mind that this is a very simplified explanation. 
Real computers are incredibly complex and can do billions of these operations every second. But at their core, every computer, from the biggest supercomputer to the smartphone in your pocket, works on these basic principles. Just like a car has different parts that make it run, a computer has its own set of parts too. Let's take a closer look at these components that make a computer tick. At the heart of the computer is the central processing unit, or CPU. This is the brain of the computer where most calculations take place. It's like the engine of a car, powering everything else. Then there's the memory, or random access memory, commonly known as RAM. Think of RAM as the computer's short-term memory. It temporarily stores data that the CPU uses for tasks it's currently working on. If the CPU is the engine, then the RAM is like the fuel that keeps it running. Next we have the hard drive. This is where all the data is stored permanently, even when the computer is turned off. It's like the trunk of the car, storing everything you need for your journey. The display or monitor is what allows you to see the information processed by the computer. It's like the windshield of the car, giving you a view of what's ahead. The keyboard and the mouse are the primary input devices. These are like the steering wheel and pedals of a car, helping you navigate and control the computer. And last but not least, we have the speakers. They play audio and are like the car's radio, enabling you to listen to music and other sounds. Each of these parts communicates and works together, just like the parts of a car. They each have their own role to play in making the computer work. The CPU processes data, the RAM provides temporary storage, the hard drive stores data permanently, the display shows the data, the keyboard and mouse allow you to control the computer, and the speakers play audio. Each part of a computer has a unique role to play, making it the powerful machine that it is. And just like a car, a computer can't function without any one of these parts. It's a team effort. Computers are not just for games or homework, they're used in many different areas of life. Let's start with education. Computers have transformed the way we learn. They offer us access to vast resources of knowledge and enable interactive learning through educational software and online classes. In the business world, computers streamline operations and enhance productivity. They're used for everything from managing inventory and processing transactions, to designing marketing campaigns and facilitating communication within teams. When it comes to entertainment, computers have brought us immersive video games, streaming platforms, and digital art tools. They've also revolutionized the music and film industries, enabling digital editing and distribution. In terms of communication, computers have made the world a smaller place. With just a click, we can connect with people on the other side of the globe through emails, video calls, and social media. Designing anything from clothes to skyscrapers has been made easier with computers. They allow for precise calculations, 3D modeling, and virtual simulations, all of which are invaluable in fields like architecture and engineering. Lastly, in the realm of scientific research, computers aid in complex data analysis, modeling, and simulations. They even play a crucial role in space exploration helping us to understand and explore the vast universe beyond our planet. From designing skyscrapers to sending emails, computers are truly versatile tools. Just like we need to be safe when we go outside, we also need to keep our computers safe. Now, you might be wondering, how can a computer be unsafe? Well, just like there are dangers in the real world, there are also dangers in the digital world. These can come in the form of viruses, which can damage your computer, malware, which is software designed to cause harm, phishing, where someone tries to trick you into giving them your personal information, and data leaks, where your information can be exposed without your knowledge. These threats might sound scary, but don't worry. There are ways to protect your computer. Just like you wear a helmet when you ride your bike, you can use security software to protect your computer this software can detect and block viruses and malware and help keep your personal information safe. It's also important to be cautious. Don't open emails or download files from people you don't know and always make sure to keep your computer's software up to date. 
Remember, the digital world can be an exciting place, full of information and fun, but it's also important to stay safe. So let's take care of our computers, keep them safe from harm and enjoy all the amazing things they can do. Remember, a safe computer is a happy computer.